The 6 o'clock news starts right now. It will be Friday before a history-making virtual trial originally set to begin today is gaveled to order. 40 prospective jurors and 19 alternates were virtually sworn in today, but the original trial has been delayed over a consent issue and another case to be tried has not been selected. We do not have a case wherein both attorneys have consented to date. Now, before a case can be tried virtually, both sides must give their consent. The judge, the jury, the lawyers, and their clients will all participate remotely. The judge set August 21st for the date for a jury to be selected from the 40 prospective jurors. Mayor Ron Nurnberg reacting today to Governor Greg Abbott's plan to freeze property tax revenues for any city that defunds its police. The governor and top Republican state legislators announced the idea yesterday following Austin's move to cut its police budget. San Antonio City Manager Eric Walsh has proposed a months-long process of examining SAPD's functions, which could result in changes in the future. However, the city does not appear ready to make any big cuts in this year's budget process. I would maintain that um, this is a process, a very deliberative one that the, the city council and the community are engaged in together right now. Uh, but it shouldn't come as any surprise that the so-called small, small government bureaucrats in Austin are playing big brother. A spokesman for the governor said they expect legislators will take up the issue during the regular session, which begins in January. He was described as being a hard worker with a big personality, and now the Converse Fire Department is working on memorial plans to honor the life of their fire captain, Bryant Anderson. He passed away last night from complications related to COVID-19. Anderson was a 16-year veteran of that department. He was known for mentoring fellow firefighters and volunteering in the community. The Converse Fire Chief saying he'll be missed by all. That leaves a hole. That leaves a hole in our, in our hearts. Uh, and uh, around the dining room table and, and on calls, uh, you know, that'll be felt for, for a while, uh, for years to come. Anderson is survived by his wife, Rosie, three children and three grandchildren. As San Antonio hospitalization rates go down for COVID-19, space is freeing up for elective surgeries that have been postponed since March. At University Hospital, for example, operating rooms were unblocked last week, allowing elective pr procedures for the first time since April. Ursula Perry has what patients need to know. Debbie Durant is an avid exerciser and traveler, but she's been sidelined by knee pain. I couldn't walk. My knee hurt that bad. Then COVID-19 sidelined her knee replacement surgery, not once, but twice. Because of COVID, it was canceled. And then we rescheduled for April and it was canceled. As elective surgeries begin to resume again, some doctors are recommending patients have surgery now in case there's another spike of COVID cases. I tell my patients now the best time to get surgery because if it gets bad, we may have to cancel elective surgeries or at least postpone them again. We keep up to date with all the most current guidelines uh, put out there by the public uh, Department of Public Health as well as the CDC. For elective surgeries, hospitals are implementing new protocols to keep everyone safer. We do a screening out front before they come in, check their temperatures, check for any symptoms. Um, we are testing all of our patients for COVID before they come in for surgery. And for high-risk procedures, a clear drape or plastic box is placed over patients, reducing the risk of spread. After months of waiting, Debbie is finally able to have that knee replacement surgery. Keep in mind with the backlog of COVID-19 related elective surgery postponements, if you reschedule, it may take three or four months to get in. And if COVID-19 infection rates increase again, once again, your surgery will likely be sidelined. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. Well, some Edison High School students were exposed to more than education during a virtual art class yesterday. Yeah, a disturbing Zoom meeting between a teacher and more than a dozen students. You can hear the chaos after what appears to be a freshman making sexual gestures at a teacher while lifting up his shirt. Devin Clark with the story, but we do want to warn you, some of the content may be disturbing. 
I was furious. I was so upset. Mariana Rodriguez was compelled to speak out after hearing her son Eduardo Corpus recount disturbing moments captured during a virtual art class via Zoom for students at Edison High School yesterday. Uh, they're putting their shirts up and saying like really disgusting stuff to the teacher, making her feel uncomfortable. You know? Why are you so sexy? The class is comprised of students from different grade levels. Corpus says he's never met some of them, including the one freshman he says can be seen lifting his shirt up. But Corpus says the imagery he displayed will be hard to forget. I just don't understand what goes through uh, the kids' heads, you know, like what, what are they thinking when they do that? Rodriguez says she understands it must be extra hard for kids to focus during Zoom meetings. They can be done anywhere and the possibilities for distractions are endless. But she's hoping that parents will urge their kids to think about how hard it must be for the teachers. They have about 24 to 30 students in one classroom and they have four periods daily. The San Antonio Independent School District released a statement saying, quote, we are looking into this and appropriate disciplinary action will be taken. Even with remote learning, we are following the SAISD Student Code of Conduct, which has policies in place to promote and maintain a positive, safe, and effective learning environment for students and adults, end quote. Rodriguez thinks making the parents pay could help. If they get fined for every single time that a child does these kind of Things, believe me, their bill's going to be pretty high and someone's going to be parenting differently. Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. A couple of suspects still on the run after a carjacking and a chase on the city's east side late last night. According to police, it all started in a convenience store parking lot off of W.W. White Road. That was around 11 o'clock. Officers say three men carjacked someone at gunpoint and then drove off. A police officer picked up the suspect vehicle and followed. Those suspects never pulled over, though. Then the pursuit began. We're told the driver eventually crashed on MLK near I-10, and all the suspects bailed out and made a run for it. Police managed to arrest one of them. The other two got away. Take a look outside with our roadways right now. Time saver traffic taking us to an accident trouble spot there at 410 and Perrin Vital. This is actually happening on the on ramp from Starcrest to 410. You can see a number of emergency vehicles there on the scene. A tow truck, we understand, just arrived there too. Again, this is 410 and Perrin Vital. New at 6, Joanna Hernandez didn't let living in public housing stop her from self-publishing her first book. Titled, I Have a Gift and I Have Many Gifts, her book has a heartfelt message about self-esteem, a message conveyed by a little girl also named Joanna. Jesse de Goyado tells us the book was written for more than just children. My whole thing is early childhood development and also a yoga mindfulness instructor. A combination of the two led to Joanna Hernandez writing, I am a gift and I have many gifts based on a verse from the Bible. Proverbs 18, 16, a gift opening the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. A resident of public housing, Hernandez credits her caseworker for believing in her gift. Before this book, I had it was just a script, like just a piece of paper. Enough to urge her to get it published so that not only children could learn from it. The more we practice our talent and share the gifts we have, they become bigger and stronger and beautiful. Simple enough for a child to understand and still address the tendency of even grown-ups to compare themselves to others. Because every gift, every skill, every talent is unique in its own way. We don't need a copycat. It just be you. In a sense, that's what Hernandez did, overcoming any doubts and obstacles in her way. After all, she writes, No one can take this gift away from you because it is yours to keep. Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Hernandez already has done a reading on Facebook. Her new book is on Amazon, and she hopes to have it in libraries in the near future. All right, outside with live cam, not as much activity on the radar this afternoon as what we saw yesterday, but still plenty of triple digit heat out there. We're sitting at 101 at the airport. That's actually two degrees cooler than where our official high temperature was this afternoon. Yes, we made it up to 103 degrees here in San Antonio, even a couple of degrees hotter than that across other parts of South Texas. Now have a look at your high temperatures coming up in just a couple of minutes. First, let's check on the aquifer. It's up three tenths of a foot, a little boost. We will always take that, that's for sure. But take a look at the pollen count. If you haven't seen this today, you may have felt it by this point. Look at that mold count, very high, over 17,000, but at least 
Fall Elm is on the lower side today, and that is some good news. Looking at radar again, not as much activity as what we saw yesterday. A few little showers did try to get going down closer to a uh, live oak and McMullen counties there, even just off to the west there in southern Medina County. But anything that could get bubbled up earlier this afternoon has already started to fizzle out and the rest of the evening will be rain free. A lot of heat out there again. 102 up in New Braunfels right now. 102 in Catula as well. 101 in Del Rio. But like Adam was talking about during the five o'clock newscast. Yeah, it's hot, but it is not overly muggy. Our dew point numbers are nice and low in a lot of spots. Look at the 40s from Gonzales up to New Braunfels, 51 here in San Antonio. So it's those lower dew point numbers that just don't make it feel so oppressively hot out there, and we will take that anytime. That's for sure. Even as we get into tomorrow morning, we are looking at our dew point number staying on the lower side into the afternoon as well. So that slightly drier air is going to help take our temperatures overnight for a lot of us into the low 70s. So not a bad start tomorrow morning, but tomorrow afternoon, you guessed it hot again. A lot of us will be back in the triple digits for your Thursday. Plenty of sunshine as well. Now we're not totally done with chances of rain. A few little rain chances are sprinkled into your planning forecast. We'll take a look at that check on the tropics coming up in just a bit. It is time for the daily coronavirus update. Let's go there live. Tonight we're joined by Dr. Galade Aga, who is our chief of informatics at San Antonio Metro Health, and she is the queen of data here in our Metro Health operations. So uh, glad to have her with us. And this is our COVID-19 update for the San Antonio community. We are reporting tonight 191 new cases of COVID-19, which brings a total to 44,456 in our community since the pandemic began. Our seven-day moving average has dropped a bit too, which is our, which is now at 143 new cases per day. Uh, unfortunately, we have a number of new deaths to report tonight as we continue to go through the verification process on those cases reported to us by the state. We have a total now of 656 who have passed since this uh, pandemic began, verified deaths in our community. These occurred between uh, the new deaths, the 19 reported tonight, occurred between July 13th and August 17th. Ten of those are uh, after reviewing death certificates reported to Metro Health by the state, which verified the death. And again, Metro Health verified those deaths are COVID-19 related. Now, um, I'd like to go into some of the demographic information, and this is some of the work that Dr. Aga has done for us. Um, demographics of these cases and deaths uh, help us with the understanding uh, beyond the numbers, which also helps us understand why we can't let our guard down. And keep in mind, those numbers that are reported tonight are a loved one lost, a life well lived, uh, mothers, fathers, daughters, uncles, neighbors, colleagues, and certainly friends. Um, so with regard to the demographic data in these uh, cases, over the last couple of months, things have changed. The number of cases in children has increased by double uh, what it was two months ago, and that is true for cases overall as well as those in the hospital. Um, in mid-June, the number of children with COVID-19 hospitalizations was about 1.1 of the total hospitalizations. That number has doubled as well, which is now at 3.7 percent. Uh, total cases in the hospital are now pediatric. Of roughly 12 percent of total cases are those of people under 19 years old. 66% of deaths are Latinos in our community. Uh, that is up 6% since we uh, started tabulating those, so that has risen. Uh, and also, uh, more than 65% of those who have passed away had at least one known underlying condition. This is important because as you go about your daily activities, you might not know if the person next to you is more vulnerable to the severe effects of COVID-19. And that's why it's important to wear your mask, keep your physical distancing six feet away from others at all times, and a reminder that we all need to do our part uh, to protect each other. And again, underlying health conditions are very, very common, can range from diabetes to high cholesterol, so we need to keep our guard up. Finally, over in the hospitals tonight, we're reporting 546 cases, or excuse me, 546 people in the hospital. That's down 23 from yesterday. 50 new admissions to the hospitals overnight, as well as 247 of those in ICU. That's down eight from yesterday, and 162 on ventilators, down 22. In terms of capacity, 56% of ventilators are available, as well as 14% of staff hospital beds. Let me turn it over to Judge Wolf. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. And and some of those certainly certainly moving right with respect to the um, hospitalizations. Um, 
You know, one thing we always talk about, how many people we, we uh, lose and how many may be in a hospital, but uh, there's also a lot of people that have long compl compl complications a long time after they've been uh, cured of COVID. Uh, like today, we still have over 80 patients uh, in long-term assisted care that have COVID that still have the impact of what they had. So when you get it, you don't necessarily get over it, uh, depending on uh, how bad it is or what condition you were when you got it. Uh, the, the, the report that you gave uh, with respect to the doubling of the, uh, of the uh, uh, 18 and younger uh, uh, pediatric care issues that we're facing, uh, I, I, it's beginning to show somewhat uh, over in the Bernie School District, within the first five days, they've had five cases and some 60 uh, possible exposures there. And so now as we get closer and closer to September the 8th, which is not that far away, uh, we're going to have to be extremely careful because of the more uh, uh, young people getting it and then more young people getting in the hospital. I think we had one that passed away, wasn't it, that was... Uh, 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 Low 18. So we're going to have to be ready for that. Uh, tragedy still continues to hit uh, uh, public sector. Um, Mayor Al Suarez of Converse has been a friend for a long, long time. And just the, just today, or actually yesterday, uh, the Converse Fire, De Fire Department announced that Captain Brian Anderson, a 16-year veteran in the uh, Fire, Fire Department, lost his life due to COVID. Uh, so it can strike anywhere, anytime, any age. So, as the mayor said, mask. By the way, I have a mask and a scarf, so I'm really double protected. <laughs> mask, uh, social distance, uh, uh, sanitation. Uh, don't get in real big, large groups. Uh, uh, we'll work our way through this. All right. Thank you, Judge Wolf. And as always, you can see the latest uh, data on COVID-19 in our community by going to the website covid19.sanantonio.gov. All right. We are continuing to see the numbers move in the right direction. Fewer cases being reported today, 191 new cases, but the seven day average now down to about 143 and a new verified uh, deaths. So there were 19 today. That brings our total now to 656. Yeah, and those from the time period of July 13th through August 17th. Also interesting note to come out of that, a very alarming note at that. It yeah. was the pediatric cases and that's something that we're closely watching as we get closer to that September 8th date when a lot of school districts are set to go back to in-person learning that the number of children with COVID-19 has increased, has actually doubled yeah. in the past two months, along with the number of children in the hospital. That number has also increased. Yeah, one number that's not moving in the right direction as yeah. we move closer and closer to schools reopening uh, the day after Labor Day. We're going to be talking with the mayor uh, later on in the show. We'll certainly ask him about that as well. All right, let's turn now to weather. 101 degrees out there right now, Katie. Yeah, maybe not trending in the right direction with these temperatures. No, no. <laughs> Triple digit heat still in the forecast. Here were your official high temperatures today. 103 in San Antonio, 105 up in New Braunfels, 102. Your official high in Del Rio, our average high here in San Antonio, 96. So a good bit above that average for this time of year. And uh, looking ahead to the rest of the week and the weekend, it'll be staying very hot for the next couple of days with high temperatures at or above 100 degrees. But we're not cutting off rain chances completely. And if you've been with us, this week. Uh, you know the reason why we've had these showers and storms around the past couple of days. It's because we've got the heat high firmly centered off to the west and we're getting these little disturbances in this northerly flow and those can help to spark some generally low end coverage wise showers and thunderstorms and we're going to stay in this flow for the rest of the week and into the weekend. So that will allow us to keep a little 10% chance of rain in there, mainly as we get into Saturday. We'll have to watch things the next couple of afternoons if we can get a couple of little thunder showers to bubble up. That'll help a few folks out, but I do think our next OK chance of rain that'll hold off until Saturday as we stay in this northerly flow. Uh, looking at what's going on in the Atlantic, things are getting pretty busy out there. There are three areas that the National Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on. Two of them, one in the Caribbean, one still out in the Atlantic, have high odds of development over the next two to five days, this red color here. And of course, this one might get your attention because it's a little bit closer to home. Still way too soon to tell exactly what this 
unorganized mess of showers and thunderstorms will do, but we will keep, be keeping a close eye on it as it gets closer to the Yucatan Peninsula over the next couple of days. We'll, we'll keep you informed. You know that 70 tomorrow morning. Enjoy it. Lower humidity in place again tomorrow. That does mean, though, it will still be very hot into the afternoon with high temperature tomorrow right around 102. Next week does look better for some chances of showers and storms. All right. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. Larry's warming up in the wings. He'll be back with sports right after this. You know, obviously I can't control the student body and, um, you know, a lot of people, they don't have this, uh, and it's not in a bad way, they don't have the same mindset, um, you know, when football coming back because a lot of us are, you know, if we miss, if we test positive or even if we're around somebody who tests positive, we're out for a minimum of 10 days and um, a, lot of, a lot of us can't afford that. That said, Texas A&M quarterback Kellen Mond has a message for his fellow students in big board sports. First time since 1997, the San Antonio Spurs will take part in the NBA Draft Lottery tomorrow night. Boston had the best odds in 97 to win the lottery at 27.5%. The Spurs were second at 21.6%, yet the Spurs won the lottery, drafted Tim Duncan, and the rest is history. But after 22 straight playoff appearances, the Spurs missed out this season and are now one of 14 teams in the NBA Draft Lottery. The Spurs are 11th entering the Draft Lottery and have a 2% chance to win the number one pick followed by 2.2%, 2.4% and 2.8% for the second, third and fourth picks respectively. The NBA Draft Lottery is tomorrow night at 7.30 virtually. UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer is doing his best to keep his student athletes safe and COVID-19 free. Made more difficult this week with UTSA students moving into on-campus housing. The Roadrunners basically have their own bubble to lessen the threat of the coronavirus pandemic. When it comes to wearing a mask, Coach Trailer is not messing around. We won't start a meeting unless their masks are on and their notes are out. Uh, when we go in the gymnasium, we won't start a walkthrough till our masks are all on. So we're, we're doing a, a heavy, heavy emphasis on that. Uh, as you can see what's going on. I, I, I've told y'all before, we, we speak about current events quite a bit with other universities that have let their kids back on campus. Uh, you've seen some of those you know, rates go up. We can't be one of those schools. We, we've got to be better than that. UTSA has not announced any positive COVID-19 tests since fall camp began August 7th. And Texas A&M starting quarterback Kellen Mond wants to make the most of his senior season, but first he needs a senior season, which isn't guaranteed. The Pac-12 and Big Ten canceled fall sports due to the COVID-19 concerns, and Mond doesn't want to see the SEC do the same thing. So Mond offered a plea to his fellow Texas A&M classmates. If the student body could just help us, um, you know, wear your mask, uh, limit the partying, and, you know, football players, we're not even partying or doing all that stuff right now. I don't even think there's time for it. But, um, yeah, if they could, you know, limit that and, you know, you know, try to stay as healthy as possible, I think that'll definitely help us. And, you know, especially in College Station with a, a large body of students, um, I think if they're able to do that, then, you know, we're definitely going to have a season. Oh. Head coach Jimbo Fisher said A&M currently has no COVID-19 cases among players, although two are quarantined. Guys, let's hope it stays that way. I know, right? Thanks, Larry. <laughs> you got it. We'll be right back. The debate over reopening schools rages from coast to coast as more and more students who return to the classrooms test positive across the country. Some officials are now rethinking reopening plans as the death toll continues rising in the U.S. with nearly 172,000 American lives lost to COVID-19. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. New video shows a large group of people at the University of Notre Dame under a tent last weekend without social distancing and many without masks. More than 200 people have now tested positive at the school. The news prompting officials to switch to remote learning for two weeks. Every person needs to really ensure that they're not infecting another. And that means we can't have these large parties. 
University officials have also closed public spaces and banned off-campus students from facilities to help stop the spread. Michigan State University is also asking undergrads to stay home, pivoting to online-only classes. At UNC Chapel Hill, some are taking matters into their own hands, packing up after just a week of in-person classes. Things are really uncertain right now, a lot of anxiety. I'd just rather not live like that. The World Health Organization says young people are driving the pandemic in multiple countries because many are unaware they're infected. Dr. Anthony Fauci with a strong message in a live stream interview with the nonprofit Commonwealth Club. They are propagating a pandemic which is greatly influencing the country as a whole and killing some people. None of us are in a vacuum. We're all part of a very unfortunate dynamic that's going on in our country. While cases are decreasing in parts of the country, deaths are on the rise. An internal FEMA memo obtained by ABC News shows there were nearly 7,500 deaths last week, up more than 3% from the week before. Florida hitting its own grim new milestone, topping 10,000 deaths. The American Academy of Pediatrics released new guidance today on reopening schools, saying while it is important to get kids back in classrooms, some areas in the U.S. with high levels of COVID-19 should wait until the virus is under control. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Starting in just about 20 minutes, it is the SA Live Back to School Special in Prime Time. Yeah, everything you need to know for digital learning, tech at home, frugal fashion finds, and of course, free food for the kids. Mike and Fiona standing by at Sunshine Cottage, and they are ready to go. Yep, it is back to school time, and we are here for our back to school special in prime time at Sunshine Cottage School for deaf children. And you know what? He calls us all the time for, you know, tech support, so we sent him to Best Buy. Yes, because think about last year when the school year ended and all those Zoom meetings you had going on and the learning at home, and could your house handle it, the Wi Fi network? No, we've got some great tips from Best Buy. And we want to see your school spirit. Let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. Maybe you've got your old letter jacket. Maybe you have some pictures of you in sports. Send them in. Yeah. We'd love to see them. And we want to know how the kids feel about this new school year because some folks are going to be learning at home and there's the distancing and everything like that. So we're going to hear from the students themselves. So adorable. I know. And of course, back to school fashion with Revolution Thrift. This is a great way to find some great deals and even learning supplies for kids. And you're giving back to the community. Our good friend Karen Mead is going to help us uh, get all organized for for school as well. All that and so much more in just a few minutes on SA Live's Back to School Special in Prime Time, brought to you by Sunshine Cottage School for Deaf Children. I graduated many, many, many moons ago, but I still have my Letterman jacket. I still have yes. mine somewhere in a box. <laughs> I have to find it. <laughs> hey, fun. Katie, it was nice to see that rain that you promised us on Sunday. I got it on Monday and yesterday. There you go. So very happy in my backyard. You were one of the lucky ones. Yeah, yeah I watched it dance all around me yesterday. <laughs> I know, kind of frustrating at times. Not as much on radar today. There were a couple of little thunder showers that tried to get going primarily down well to our south in Live Oak and McMullen counties. And even right now, it looks like there's a little shower just trying its darndest down there in far southern McMullen County. Otherwise, very quiet on the radar today. You know, start of school year. This is going to be a weird school year, right? One thing that's not going to be different hot for the start of the school year. 101 out there right now after a high of 103 today. But the kicker and what is not necessarily common for this time of year is this number, the dew point in the 40s. We've got a wind out of the east, northeast. That is dropping our dew point numbers in a lot of spots across South Texas. So while it was very hot today, perhaps you noticed, especially if you were along and north of 90, it just wasn't so miserably humid out there. And that's because we've got a east northeasterly wind in place and that is filtering in some slightly drier air. Look at this, a dew point in the 40s up in New Braunfels. If this were three months from now, we'd be into pumpkin spice weather. We're not quite there just yet, 
but it is nice to have these lower dew points because yeah, it just keeps it feeling, it keeps it from feeling so miserable out there. Look what happens. We get into tomorrow morning. Now, some of our folks down on the coastal bend, your dew point numbers are going to shoot back up tonight, so it'll be feeling pretty muggy to start the day, but a lot of us will still have some slightly drier air in place tomorrow, and that will help our air temperatures fall off even more tonight. So look, first thing tomorrow morning, upper 60s in the hill country near 70 here in San Antonio and up by 35 in New Braunfels. So that is not too shabby at all. We'll have plenty of sunshine to start the day tomorrow as well. But the kicker with the drier air is that, yeah, it helps us to cool off a bit more overnight. It also helps us to heat up that much more in the afternoon. So while it will be not so miserably humid tomorrow afternoon, it will be another hot day. That's for sure. Something else I want to let you know about air quality tomorrow because of elevated levels of ozone will be considered unhealthy for sensitive groups, and those sensitive groups include the very young, the elderly, and also those with respiratory conditions like asthma. So air quality taking a bit of a hit as we get into the day tomorrow, so that is something to consider. If you or a family member fall into one of those groups, you're encouraged to limit your time outdoors, especially in the afternoon, and that's when it's going to be hottest anyway, so just keep everybody inside. Uh, checking on the tropics once again, very active here. We've got several waves coming off the coast of Africa and across the Atlantic Ocean. Several areas here. Each of these X's is a disturbance that the Hurricane Center is watching. This just means this is an unorganized cluster of shower and thunderstorm activity here. Also here working into the Caribbean uh, and both of these areas have high odds of development over the next two to five days. So high odds of becoming uh, our next tropical depression, potentially our next named storm. Of course, this is the one we're keeping a somewhat closer eye on because it is a bit closer to home. This will continue to work through the Caribbean the next couple of days as we get into early next week. Still a big question mark as to what this would potentially mean for any of the Gulf Coast states. However, it does look like some of this moisture will try to work into the Gulf of Mexico by late this weekend and early next week. Still way too soon to know if there's going to be specific impacts anywhere along the Gulf Coast, but this thing gets into the Gulf and it, you know, we've got a lot of area to cover here, so still a lot of time to watch that. And of course, uh, we'll keep you updated right now, not seeing any big impacts to our forecast here in South Texas. For your Thursday, enjoy that 70 in the morning. It is not going to be too shabby at all, but it will be very hot in the afternoon with a high around 102. Humidity will start to kick back in Friday and this weekend, so that drier air unfortunately won't be hanging around for too long. We could see a stray thunder shower Saturday, but it does look like early next week we'll have better chances of some isolated showers and storms guys all right thank you so much katie mm -hmm. we'll be right back firefighters in north texas dealing with a huge fire at a plastics plant that has been burning since the overnight hours crews getting the call to the poly america factory in grand prairie around midnight fire officials believe a power line fell in the area where large plastic rolls were stored and caught fire and those flames have been burning ever since poly america makes products that are made from polyethylene like trash bags plastic sheets and drop cloths plenty to fuel a huge fire like this one so far no reports of any injuries no evacuations have been ordered, and right now fire crews expect to let this one burn itself out, which could take until tomorrow. Well, one of Texas's most wanted fugitives is back behind bars after he was arrested in Arkansas. Authorities say 50-year-old Patrick Neal Naren is part of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas and was wanted on a number of charges, including parole and being a felon with a gun. He'd been on the run since October of last year and was last seen in Point Blank, which is east of Huntsville. After getting a Crime Stoppers tip, Investigators from Texas and Arkansas tracked him down to a home in North Little Rock. The person who made that tip will get a reward of $7,500 from Crime Stoppers. Well, news around America today, a groundbreaking move for Girl Scouts USA. The organization has named its first black CEO, former ExxonMobil lawyer Judith Beatty, as their interim CEO. It's a major milestone for the Girl Scouts. The youth leadership organization's history included racially segregated troops in its early years. Beatty herself is a former Girl Scout, starting as a brownie with her local Nassau County Council in New York. She has also served on the board. Target is seeing its sales soar during the pandemic. The retail chain says sales at stores open at least a year grew more than 24% between May and July. That is the 
strongest quarterly sales growth in Target's history. Online delivery and curbside pickup were a highlight for the company, rising 195 percent during the quarter. Big box chains like Target and Walmart have thrived during the pandemic, which were deemed essential retailers. Walmart says its quarterly sales were up 9 percent over the same period. We'll be right back. When it comes to COVID-19, we are seeing an improvement in our community, but we still have a long way to go. And joining us right now to talk a little bit more about that is Mayor Ron Nirenberg. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for joining us. I want to begin by asking you about some of these indicators that we've been watching closely. My understanding is things like our doubling rate and our decline in cases are seeing an improvement. But where are we in terms of our positivity rate right now? Yeah, well, thanks for having me, Isis. And yeah, our, uh, everything seems to be improving, uh, just not very quickly, which is the nature of uh, this outbreak that we've seen. Uh, so our positivity rate, which is probably the most important indicator to express the, uh, the widespread severity of this, is about 11 percent. Um, last week, it was uh, roughly 12 and a half. So it's dropped a little bit. We actually we do want to see that positivity rate be down below 5 percent, though. Uh, for things to really start opening up uh, and for schools to go back to in-person schooling. And Mayor, I want to follow up on that. In your uh, daily briefing today, we were breaking down the demographics and one of the numbers that was not moving in the right directions was cases among pediatric uh, our kids. We're seeing those double as well as the hospitalization. As we get closer to yeah. September 8th, are we looking like we're going to be able to have kids back in class? You know, it, it's hard to say because the, the positivity rate, again, is one of the most important indicators. And when we see the school indicator on the website, it, it's heavily weighted towards the positivity rate. The positivity rate, of course, being the proportion of tests that come back positive. And that will show how widespread uh, the infections are, are occurring. Um, so, it, you know, we've got to continue to work hard to bring this uh, infection under control. Uh, but it's, it's really too, too soon to tell at this point where we will be in two weeks. I'm hoping uh, that we'll be there, uh, but we've all got to, you know, we've got to, we've got to do the work, which is, again, physical distancing, wearing a mask and staying away from large crowds. And Mr. Mayor, last week you mentioned the new model would be coming out this week. Where are we in terms yeah. of seeing that? Yeah, I'm asking every day. They're, they're going through the data right now. And so this is being done by in partnership with uh, the, the agencies that, you know, comb through the data on a, on a larger scale. Uh, the SG2 model, which showed last time that we were following the trend, and again, a prolonged peak, plateauing, and then dropping off of right about now, uh, we're following that. So uh, the new model should be ready uh, probably the end of the week, and we'll present it to you. And what, we'll, what it will show, uh, we are told, is that we're continuing to follow that trend, so it is showing us declining, but it'll project outward to uh, late September and kind of give us a, a predictive model of where we were we were excuse me, where we should be as we get into the school opening into the fall uh, season. All right. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nurnberg joining us tonight for our questions and answers. And we're going to ask you to stick around for one more commercial break. If we can, Mr. Mayor, we have a few more questions. If you, sure. could, if you could just stand by, we'll be right back with Mayor Nurnberg. We're back with Mayor Ron Nirenberg with our KSAT Q&A. And Mr. Mayor, we talked about this a little bit last week, and I think it's worth repeating. You know, San Antonio is doing relatively well in terms of uh, improving, but that's not necessarily the case in other Texas cities. With the upcoming Labor Day holiday, what is your message for the public? Uh, be especially careful. Uh, the transmission rate in different cities uh, is at different levels. And we have seen in some of the hot spots, especially the coastal communities and the border uh, cities, have much higher positivity rates uh, than we had seen elsewhere, uh, really at any point in this, in this uh, pandemic. So be extra careful. If someone is not part of your household, make sure you keep distance. Uh, absolutely wear a mask when you leave your home. Uh, and make sure you're practicing good hygiene. Stay away from large crowds. Uh, this is not, uh, you know, this is not the time uh, to be um, gallivanting with large crowds. I can tell you that, especially uh, outside of San Antonio, um, and we just don't want to risk it. Yeah. Mayor, finally, we've seen students go back to colleges across the United States already. No social distancing. They've been partying. They've already shut down some schools after just a week. What is your message to college-age students here as they get ready to go head back to class? locally uh, same thing applies um, 
you know, our community is is dependent on everyone working together to control this virus. We've seen a few things happen here uh, that were just absolutely horrible. And we want to make sure the businesses that you enjoy patronizing are able to open up and flourish again. And, and that means that we all have to do our part. Uh, no one is immune to this virus. Those who uh, suffer from it can can end up severely ill or pass away from it. And it's happening to every uh, to all ages. And we don't know, you know, even if you didn't come down with a severe form of that illness, what the long lasting effects are. So let's just do our part. Uh, we are very close to getting this back under control. Let's not uh, let's not screw it up. All right. Mayor Ron Nurnberg, thank you so much for your time. We'll be right back. Thank you. all. Have a good night. Thank you. All right, after a high of 103, we're down to 99. Woohoo! 70 in the morning, though. That will feel pretty nice, but it'll be another hot afternoon with a high around 102. Triple digit heat hangs around for a few more days, but we're looking at some better chances of showers and thunderstorms as we get into next week. Fingers crossed there. All right, thank you. And as a reminder, SA Live's Back to School special in prime time is coming up next. Stick around for that and stick around for us later. We'll be back here for the Night Beat tonight at 10. Have a good evening.